In a follow-up to Dirk's question on install preload, we did a quick kind of breakdown on the shock using an R6 shock. And what I've done is take the complete internals out of a 636 set of forks that we have at the shop at Catalyst Reaction and deal with install preload and how that whole thing works with a set of forks. Now, as you can see, we have the fork cap preload adjuster, the fork cap, the preload spacer, and the spring itself. The rebound rod is attached to the cap. All I did was take the Allen bolt out to the bottom of the fork and pull this whole thing out as one piece so we can do the demonstration today on YouTube. So, obviously, when it's all put together, the preload spacer serves to add preload to the spring to hold it in place. You may also notice that underneath the first two coils of the spring, the plastic spacer has a recessed piece, almost like a dowel pin, to secure the spring in place to make sure it doesn't slide around on top of a washer and go from side to side, which would obviously change the way in which the spring works. So you'll find if you take forks apart that most modern preload spaces now all have this dowel pin set up inside, which is great because it keeps the spring very secure. That doesn't happen on the cartridge end. The spring simply sits on top of the cartridge right here. So it is liable to float, which isn't the best thing in the world, but it's not catastrophic. So most fork springs in general and there are multiple different lengths depending on the application but in sport bikes with this configuration run between 240 250 or 260 millimeter lengths those are the three most common we know that this is 250 millimeters because I took it off and measured it beforehand so if it's 250 in free length that means the spring has been removed from this entire setup, what is it with installed preload? So let's take a look. It is 50, so 12 millimeters of installed preload in its current setting with, as you can see, the gold preload adjuster all the way out. Now that will be our baseline setting. Our spring has 12 millimeters of installed preload. The range is 8 to 15 millimeters. Generally the smaller number refers to a heavier spring and a bigger number can be found to refer to a softer spring for obvious reasons. If it's really stiff you don't need a lot of installed preload. If it's really soft you may need more installed preload. Now with this configuration with the spring and the preload spacer in place and set to zero with the preload adjuster well how much adjustment do we have now? If the spring is X and we crank all the preload in, what do we get? Well, let's find out. Let's grab the right wrench. Okay, and let's add all the preload to the spring. So we know that we have 12 millimeters and that our install base setting measures at 238 by my tape measure there. That's maximum. So if we're at 238, let's center the spring again. There. 238 to. 230 precisely, all we get is 8 millimeters of additional preload. <clears throat> so what we have, we will refer to our range of adjustment in this instance is 8 millimeters. So what does that mean? That means when you add preload, if the bike sits and you put a zip tie on it, and this doesn't work in all cases because I'm talking specifically about this fork, when you go ahead and add all the preload to the fork itself, the fork will extend by 8 millimeters. Some forks you can add all the preload and they won't move. And that's a long, long story about top-out springs, which we're not going to segue into here in this 
six, six or seven minute version for you on YouTube today. So we know that, for example, if we're bottomed out and we put all the preload in and we bottomed out again, the spring's too soft, we can't get enough installed preload, we can't get enough additional preload in range, so we need to go ahead and change the spring. And it's very important that when the spring is changed, it is the same length so that you keep everything the same, the installed preload, etc., etc. And you never want to go beyond 15 millimeters of installed preload on a spring in a fork ever. So if you want more information on this specifically, last year we did a whole series of shows on Ustream for On The Throttle Live and look for a series of shows with Dave Moss on Sprung. There is a show specifically on fork springs themselves. It's about 20 minutes of technical information, followed up by about 40 minutes of live Q&A, where people sent the questions in and I answered them right there and then on the spot. If you are curious about top out springs, which I mentioned, there is also a separate show on, on the throttle live via Ustream about top out springs specifically. That is again about an hour long. So if you want a little more technical information on that, please go to On The Throttle Live at Ustream. Get yourself a sandwich, cup of tea, or a cold one, should that be the beverage of your choice, and of course a notebook to make plenty of notes. Now if you have any follow-up questions, please send them to me via Dave Moss Tuning at Facebook.com, or alternatively leave them here at Catalyst Reaction SBW. Thanks a lot.